There are a ton of notable characters in Call of Duty, ones that are recognizable and have awesome backstories. Many of these backstories we've gone over in previous videos that I like to call the full story of, ranging from characters like Captain Price to Frank Woods. But what happens when a bunch of these notable characters like Captain Price, Ghost, come together and work in one faction? This is something that Modern Warfare likes to call Task Force 141. That's neat to know. Unless we got a deal. What are you calling this task force? One for one. So obviously, Task Force 141 is making a return in this year's Modern Warfare, but this is a task force that has been going on since before Modern Warfare 2, and many of their missions that they've been on actually weren't in the Modern Warfare games. So in today's video, we are going to be going over this entire story, the full story of Task Force 141. The 141 is a multinational task force designed for one main purpose, hunting down and killing Vladimir Makarov. Now, Task Force 141 is composed of British, American, Australian, and Canadian forces, and there's also potential for other nationalities being in there as well, where at the peak of Task Force 141, there was upwards of 85 different soldiers in this task force. And all of these soldiers have background experience in special operations, whether that be the British SAS or the American Marines. Now, there's actually a lot of confusion revolving around the 141, as a lot of people assume that Task Force 141 began in Modern Warfare 2, as that is actually the first time we see it in game. However, Task Force 141 actually began well before that. So the first ever time we have seen Task Force 141 is actually not in a video game or a video, it is in a comic. If you didn't already know, Ghost actually has a set of comics that were launched before Modern Warfare 2. They are all about Ghost's backstory and how he came to be. In the comics, at the very beginning, you see him in a hostage situation. He is being held hostage in a what appears to be a schoolroom and is telling the story to delay time of how he became Ghost and why he wears the mask. Now, I'm not going to go in depth to that story because we did that in the full story of Ghost. However... As it turns out, at the very end of these comics, the reason why Ghost was telling these stories was to delay time for Task Force 141 to get in position, take out the terrorists, and save the hostages. At the very end of the comic, they show you, for the first time ever, the Task Force 141 logo. This was the 141's first ever mission. Going deep, and we're going hard. Surely you can't be serious. I'm serious. And don't call me Shirley. Now, another thing that may surprise you is that Task Force 141 was also in Call of Duty 4, but not in the main campaign. As it turns out, the Mile High Cub, the very last mission in the epilogue of COD 4, was actually a Task Force 141 mission. Now, it's never actually said which characters were on this mission, but it's assumed that Captain Price and Soap McTavish are both there. Now, the misconception comes in here where a lot of people assume that this mission takes place at the very end of Call of Duty 4, when in reality, it actually takes place right before the events of Modern Warfare 2, before the threat of Vladimir Makarov. This is Task Force 141's second mission. Operation Kingfish. This is probably the most important mission in any Modern Warfare game, and it's not in any of the Modern Warfare games. It is actually a little short film that they put out before the launch of Modern Warfare 2, and it's a mission that Task Force 141 and Delta Force went on together. It was their first ever mission trying to hunt down Vladimir Makarov. You see, during the events of Call of Duty 4, there was a group known as the Four Horsemen, basically the four bad guys. It was Al-Assad, Imran Zakev, Viktor Zakev, and Vladimir Makarov. Three of the four were dead after Call of Duty 4. The one remaining was Vladimir Makarov. 
Three years before Modern Warfare 2, in 2013, Task Force 141 was completely redirected, their only mission to take out Vladimir Makarov. The first mission they were sent on was known as Operation Kingfish. Now, on this mission, the four main characters of Modern Warfare 2, Captain Price, Soap, Ghost, and Roach, are all going to capture and kill Vladimir Makarov. But once they infiltrate the building, they realize he's not even there. And this is actually a bit of a trap. But they do discover the plans that he has for Zakaev International Airport, which we're going to get to in a little bit. By the end of the mission, they are stuck in a field getting shot at by Vladimir Makarov's soldiers. Many of the Task Force 141 soldiers perish, and one of them who is stuck in the field and is actually getting shot is none other than Captain Price. And as Soap is flown away, it is made clear that Captain Price is going to be left behind and left to the devices of Vladimir Makarov's army. The two big takeaways from this short film are number one, this is why Captain Price is not in the beginning of Modern Warfare 2. A lot of people assumed it was because he potentially died at the end of Call of Duty 4, but that is not the case. It all comes down to Operation Kingfish and him either being killed or taken captive during this time. The second big takeaway is we now know who is running Task Force 141, a general named General Shepard, who is going to come into play in a very big way. Now this leads us to the events of Modern Warfare 2. The first mission of Modern Warfare 2 that Task Force 141 goes on is known as Cliffhanger. When Soap and Roach get sent to a mountain in Kazakhstan to retrieve an ACS module. Basically a device that controls satellites. This is supposed to help them track down and find Vladimir Makarov. This mission goes relatively successfully with them eventually escaping on snowmobiles. But what happens next is a surprise to everyone. As we talked about in Operation Kingfish, Task Force 141 found out about Makarov's plans to execute a terrorist attack on Zakaev International Airport. What General Shepard ends up doing is sending an undercover soldier, Joseph Allen, onto Vladimir Makarov's team. And it turns out that Joseph Allen actually has to execute the terrorist attack with Vladimir Makarov. But Makarov, being a step ahead, knows about Joseph Allen being on his team. And by the end of the mission, Makarov shoots Joseph Allen leaving him behind, making it look like America is responsible for the terrorist attack. After this, Task Force 141's job is no longer to track down Vladimir Makarov, but to now prove that America is not responsible for the terrorist attack. This essentially happens in three steps. First off, they follow the bullets to Rio de Janeiro, where they track down Alejandro Roja, who gives them information about what is going on here. Step number two is infiltrating an oil rig, saving hostages, and destroying a SAM site, essentially so that they are able to fly their helicopters into the Gulag. Step number three, get into the Gulag and rescue prisoner 627 who is supposed to have information on Vladimir Makarov. When they do rescue prisoner 627, it is a pretty large surprise to everyone. Turns out that after Operation Kingfish, Captain Price wasn't dead. He was taken by Makarov and kept as a prisoner within the Russian Gulag. After Captain Price gets out of the Gulag, he then joins Task Force 141 and directly disobeys General Shepard's orders. General Shepard wants to send them right after Vladimir Makarov, whereas Captain Price wants to end the war by essentially blowing up a nuclear sub that Vladimir Makarov owns. They disobey General Shepard's order and go after the submarine. So when they get to the submarine, Roach and Soap stay back to defend the area where Captain Price actually goes into the submarine. When the submarine starts to launch nuclear missiles, it's made clear that the person shooting them is none other than Captain Price, and it appears as though he's shooting them directly at Washington, D.C. General Shepard uses this as a tactic to scare the United States and show them that Vladimir Makarov is trying to destroy the U.S. Now, as it turns out, 
Captain Price's plans were not to actually shoot the missile at the U.S., but rather shooting it into outer space, destroying a whole bunch of satellites, and essentially using it as a giant EMP to stop Makarov's attack. It successfully works. And at this point, General Shepard is essentially given a blank check by the United States to do anything possible to take out Makarov. Shepard, you warned us. We should have listened. When they speak of this moment, we will not be the ones who stood guard while America died. One man is responsible for all this. Makarov must be brought to light. Whatever you need, General, we've got a blank check. So General Shepard's next move is to just go straight for the throat and kill Vladimir Makarov. He has two options. He sends one team of Ghost and Roach to Vladimir Makarov's safe house and another team to a boneyard where Makarov can possibly be, which consisted of Ghost and Soap. The first group ends up getting to the safe house first, and when they get there, no one is there, but they do find a whole bunch of information, a big computer system that they're able to sweep clean and take all the information out of. But upon their evac, it turns out that Shepard has other plans. As it turns out, the DSM that Soap and Roach recover has information about General Shepard sending in the CIA agent and knowing about the attack on the airport. He wants to get rid of this information, but also wants to get rid of the other soldiers who know about it as well. This is why he executes Ghost and Roach. Now at this point, Price and Soap are in the boneyard, and they kind of put two and two together and figure out what General Shepard's trying to do here. And what ends up happening is... Price ends up siding with Makarov briefly to figure out the location of General Shepard. Because at this point, General Shepard actually appears to be more of a global threat than Vladimir Makarov. So upon finding out the location, Soap and Price end up going after him, and the rest is history. So at this point, Price and Soap just killed a general, a general that the world considered to be a good guy. So by every government in the world, they are disavowed and considered to be terrorists in and of themselves. At this point, they are working on their own. Task Force 141 has gone rogue. And this brings us to Modern Warfare 3. Modern Warfare 3 picks up right after the end of Modern Warfare 2. Soap is brutally injured and needs immediate medical attention. Nikolai ends up saving them from their location and bringing them to a safe house where they meet a new soldier named Yuri and get Soap the doctoral attention that he desperately needs. Now keep in mind, Task Force 141 is now working on their own, trying to hunt and kill Makarov. Their next mission is to search for a cargo package belonging to Makarov. So Yuri, Soap, and Price end up going to Sierra Leone to track it down, where they do so unsuccessfully. Their next mission is to track down someone named Warabi, a man involved with creating the chemical weapons that Vladimir Makarov used in the attacks on Europe. Now, after tracking down Warabi, they end up finding out Makarov's location in Prague. They end up hunting him down and setting up a sting operation to take him down. The problem is though, Makarov was once again one step ahead. He sets a trap for Captain Price and Soap and Yuri and ends up exposing Yuri that Yuri actually used to work with Makarov. What the hell? Price, who is that? Kamarov. I'm sorry, Price. Captain Price. At Rzdjotibia. Price, get out of there! Sure Who the hell are you talking about? Get out now! <laughs>
This explosion brutally wounds Soap, and what ends up happening next is, in my opinion, one of the saddest things that's ever happened in any Call of Duty game. Now, after Yuri explains how he used to work with Makarov and how slowly he began to hate the man and eventually ended up joining Task Force 141, Captain Price takes Yuri under his wing and their next mission is to go to a castle being used by Russian forces as a firebase to learn the location of Makarov. And at this time, they discover the location of the Russian president and the location of Makarov. The Russian president was being kept in a diamond mine alongside his daughter, which Task Force 141 alongside the US Delta Force end up rescuing. This mission is actually the mission that ended up putting Task Force 141 back in the world's good books as they realized after saving the Russian president that Task Force 141 were not terrorists after all. But there was still one last problem to deal with. That is, of course, Makarov. And after finding out his location was just off the Arabian Peninsula, Yuri and Price go in for their final mission. After tracking Vladimir Makarov all the way to the top of the building, it appears as though Makarov is about to escape. But Price makes one last jump, grabbing onto the helicopter and, well, I'll just let you watch the rest. Task Force 141 was built for one mission, taking out Vladimir Makarov and essentially ending World War III. And with their final mission, Captain Price alongside Yuri finally are able to take him out in a relatively gruesome scene. But here's the thing. The legacy of Task Force 141 doesn't end with this final mission. In 2019, it was brought back. At the very end of Modern Warfare 2019, after the campaign is completely done, we find out that there is a new bad guy in town, Khalid Al-Assad, and Captain Price has a solution for this. With the permission of General Shepard, he wants to put together a team built from certain soldiers that General Shepard has gotten the files for. Sergeant Gary. Kyle? They call him Gaz. He never said anything. John Tavish. SAS, sniper, demolitions, goes by soap. Why? It's classified. <laughs> there he is. Simon Riley. There's no picture. Never. Not a rest. That's neat to know. Unless we got a deal. What are you calling this task force? One for one.
So the legacy of 141 may have ended with the death of Makarov. However, the legacy appears to be going on. With the future of modern warfare just a year around the corner, I'm curious to see whether or not the next Modern Warfare game, potentially Modern Warfare 2, is going to revolve around the story of Task Force 141 once again. Alongside Soap, Ghost, and Gaz, it appears as though the legacy will live on. And with the credits of Modern Warfare, we get to see an image that is very familiar to us. One that may remind you of something we saw earlier, of Operation Kingfish. But ladies and gentlemen, that is the full story of Task Force 141. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. These are the hardest videos for me to make. They take the longest. So if you did enjoy, it is much appreciated if you hit that like button. And if you like what you see, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn notifications on as it's the best way to stay up to date on all my videos. And let me know down in the comments below what characters or things from Call of Duty you'd like to see the full story of next. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, guys, peace out.